Once you've been declared immaculate, once you've been declared the hero in a miracle story, when an event happens like that and it's frozen in history, um, it, there, there is a lot of burden to try to maintain the aura that surrounds it. How many times have folks asked you to describe the, the catch you made? And <laughs> Quite a few times, and it's still hard to answer, you know, what really happened. Every day in Franco's life, from December 23rd of 1972 till today, at least a dozen times a day, people will ask him, Franco, did you really score that touchdown? Who touched that ball? Do you think it was legal? Do you think that the famous catch still has tension with the Raiders? Did it hit you immediately how important that play would be to the franchise? What was your original role in the play that was called? Did you think the play was legal? Did the, uh, did the ball actually touch the ground? Did you have a special meal that day before the game? We, the observers of people who do these things that turn out to be momentous things, I don't think we have a very good grip on what it feels like to be them. I don't think it's so easy. And I think he handles it about as well as a human being can handle. At first it was quite strange and quite odd seeing a statue there. They told me it was going to be up there for six months. And here it is years later and it's still up there. I hear at times some Raider fans go through there and try to knock the ball out of my hand. Beware, you better get some extra security by that statue. I'm not going to miss my tackle again. That thing's coming down. In addition to the museum exhibits, the Immaculate Reception has spawned a cottage industry. Remember John McMakin, the tight end whose magnificent obstruction sprung Franco for the touchdown? He made the play the cornerstone of his business. I had this card made up, this statement, uh, we can't predict, we can't be prepared for the unexpected, which is what insurance is all about. People love using that name. How about the immaculate collection of furniture? I have one, it's a great chair. Franco did an ad for a phone company called the Immaculate Reception. The Immaculate Reception, like, you know, phone reception. Frenchie came out one time with the Immaculate Confection. This guy came up with a great idea, a candy bar. The Immaculate Confection. I said, what? Frenchie has made a living post-NFL, speaking at banquets. I'm gonna tell you some things that no one else knows. Basically, who touched the ball in the Immaculate Reception. And he teases you by saying, you know, tonight, I'm gonna finally tell you what happened on that play. What I tell you today, I'm gonna deny tomorrow. And he gets to the point where he's going to tell you, and then he says, you know what, I better not. I better not, I wanna, I wanna keep this immaculate. And that's his payoff. Hello, Roger. No, I'm not gonna tell what happened. No, don't take my pension. Listen, I'm serious. I wasn't gonna tell him. There's one part of the Immaculate Reception that's not for sale, and that's the football. It belongs to Jim Baker, an insurance agent who was part of the crowd that mobbed the field. They kept shoving people back because you couldn't end the game. On a, without kicking the extra point. Down in front of us is the mass of humanity. I headed for the goalpost because they were bringing Jarella out. It wasn't a just run in and grab it and run. I had to fight a while for that ball. Word spread like wildfire. Jim Baker has the ball, Jim Baker has the ball. Franco's Italian Army offered me birthday cakes for the rest of my life, which would have been a pretty long time. I turned that down. Later on, I had an offer from a prominent businessman of $150,000. In 2005, Sports Illustrated valued the football at $80,000.
a figure Baker finds conservative. Premiums to insure the ball for $1 million were so much money that I could not afford it. The only one that was going to do it was Lloyd's of London. So I figured the next best thing was to protect that ball, I'm going to buy a safe. And I bought a big safe. This bank vault is the centerpiece of my business. In here rests the Immaculate Reception football. A bank vault like this to build today would probably cost you seven or eight hundred thousand dollars. The safe is approximately 20 foot long, eight foot high, poured concrete with a stainless steel door, and it also is fireproof. I get invited to a lot of celebrations with that ball. We are serious about protection. This football doesn't go anywhere without armed security. Don't test them, don't try them. They're licensed and they're packing heat.